Hello, check this out. This is the DecaWave DWM1000 UWB, that's ultra wideband radio module, and this can send and receive data, but it's also, well, the main purpose of it, I think, is for ranging, that is, measuring distances. It's pretty neat. So, this board here I've designed, it's basically an Arduino Pro Mini with the module itself stuck on the top there, that's it with the ceramic antenna. And I've got that connected to my phone. And this is just showing the serial monitor output. And you can say, see it's showing that it's four meters roughly away from the anchor, which is just over there on top of there. So it's the same thing. And it's just running from a battery. And um, I'm just going to go for a little walk carrying this and see how far I can get. Not expecting too much from what I've seen of this. I've just did a quick test indoors. And to be honest, it was a little disappointing. <laughs> Not sure if I was uh, expecting too much or what. Alright, so I'm standing right next to the anchor now. And it's reading, uh, what does it say, 0 point, about 40 centimeters. Actual distance is more like 20 centimeters. So don't expect too much accuracy, especially at that kind of range. Uh, but as we get further away, you can see that it's quickly going up. Hope this is in focus. Yep, alright. So let me just get a bit further away and I'll see at what point it drops out. Well that was quick, already having trouble at about seven and a half meters. You can see it's sort of stuttering a bit now. And I'm only just, you know, just here. And I think it helps if you keep this antenna away from other things. So I'm trying to hold it a little bit away from the phone just in case that has anything to do with it. So we're only at 8 meters now, and I, I got to 10 meters before and it cut out, and I had to come back to 7 to, to recover it. See, there we go, we've lost connection at about 8 meters. And there's not really much of an excuse for that, I don't think, because it's a perfectly clear line of sight to there. And I've also oriented the antennas the same way, which seems to make a little bit of difference. So if I if I go back over there, you'll see that this antenna and that antenna are in the same orientation. Like that. It said something in the data sheet about a difference in um, gain and in, in direction around the antenna. So it's slightly directional, and I think this is this, this should be the strongest way. But just in case it's not, let me go out in the other direction, 90 degrees down that way. Okay, so in this direction we've got 12 meters. Maybe this is the stronger direction, but anyway. 12 meters is still not much. Okay, it came back at 11.6 or so. Okay, I spent a few minutes wandering around checking various locations and orientations and also holding the antenna well away from the phone just to make sure that wasn't anything to do with it. And the best I can get is in the same place as I was before when I saw 12 meters briefly. And I'm getting 11 meters or so here. Uh, so same, same direction antenna relative to the antenna. The best I can get in any other direction is about 7 to 8 meters, a little over 8 meters, usually it cuts out in all, all directions around there. Uh, so, yeah, not much range really. I just quickly tried over in this direction as well, just in case it was better than that other semicircle, because I was only, only checking a semicircle around on the other side of the fence there. But in this direction I could only get about 6.8 meters, and that's not surprising because this is the opposite side of the antenna from, I mean, the, the antenna is on the other side of the PCB looking from this direction. There's also a car here, which I don't know if that really matters, but um, for whatever reason, 6.8 meters is all we could get over here. And if I come over here, away from the car, uh, it's a little bit better, 8.5, but still 8.5 seems to be consistently the, the um, time that it, uh, the distance that it cuts out in pretty much every direction. Okay, now what was that all about? I realize I didn't give much of an introduction to that, so let's take a step back and look at this module that I was using here. This is the DWM1000, which is an ultra-wideband compliant wireless transceiver module based on DecaWave's DW1000 integrated circuit. So we need to take another step back, I think, for most people and look at what is ultra-wideband and what is the whole point of it. So. I'll put a link in the description to these two pages here that I came across. Um, 
for a change, the Wikipedia page wasn't much use, to me at least. Um, it used a lot of big words that I didn't really understand, but this page has some pictures. So there's a graph here, and we can see that for most forms of radio communication that we're familiar with, they're in a fairly narrow bandwidth. Uh, for example, GPS is like 1.5 to 1.6 gigahertz. Wi-Fi and the typical radios that we use for our drones and stuff is around 2.4 gigahertz, and they're very specific on that frequency, and we get antennas that work very well at that range and so on. But ultra-wideband is quite different. It spreads its energy, rather than being high energy on a, on a narrow frequency, it's lower energy on a wide range of frequencies. So that's about my the extent of my knowledge on that but there's a little bit more down here there was something else here okay so the point of it is these things here uh, superior performance in multipath better ability to penetrate obstacles no disturbance to other wireless technologies and this one here which is what we were actually doing at the beginning of the video there high precision ranging uh, so what it's doing is measuring time of flight between the two endpoints and this enables it to achieve precise location down to centimeters and if you want to know a little bit more about how um, this is all done, uh, you can look at this other page. So this POSIX company is another company that makes a similar sort of technology. And they've got uh, some information about this here. Okay, then let's go back to this page now that we know all about it. So the DW1000 is this integrated circuit sitting on there. And the DW M1000 is this module, so the supporting components and the ceramic antenna there in the PCB. And this module just makes it easier for you to get up and running and try using these things. So the uh, IC is that bit there. Um, now this module, they have put here excellent communications range of up to 300 meters. So that's why I was saying earlier that it was a little bit disappointing compared to what I was expecting. If you look at the... Um, product brief, I think it was there, this one here, it does have an asterisk next to that excellent communications range of up to 300 meters. And if we look at the asterisk down somewhere, where's it gone? It said depends on mode. Where's it gone? I was looking at this just before. Oh well, it said it depends on the mode you're using. So perhaps my uh, Arduino library that I'm using is not using the right mode. I don't, I'm not sure, I haven't really looked into this too much. But I did notice that there's a video on YouTube showing somebody getting decent connection. Um, and when I say decent connection, I'm just looking at the update rate of the screen there. It's updating fairly regularly. <laughs> that wasn't me, that was him. <laughs> Unfortunately, this video is atrociously shot. Not, in, not only is it vertically portrayed, um, filmed. It's shaking around all over the place. So it's really hard to see what the hell's going on. But there are points where he's getting packets or messages from about 130 meters away. Note though that the antenna that he's using and the board is completely different. Looks like, if I can just get one that's in focus, there we go. Looks like he's ordered one of these integrated circuits separately and he's designed his own circuit board and own PCB antenna which is completely different from the one I'm using. Um, which leads me to believe there may be some hope yet, but possibly just not with this um, version. So the DWM1000 that I got, I found these on DigiKey for the astronomical price of $25. Now that, I'm, kind of, I'm joking there, that's, that's pretty cheap for what these things can do. And I first became aware of UWB way back in 2011, I think it was, right when I first started doing Arduino stuff. And I wanted to try controlling my Hubsan X4 little quadcopter that I just bought. It was my first ever quadcopter. And I wanted to control that and have it just sort of hovering in the room. And this UWB seemed the perfect thing to do that because if you get three anchors or three tags uh, and you place them around the room somewhere and then you get another one and you put it on your drone, you can, uh, in real time, the drone can know where it is relative to those tags just by using um, the distances. I think four tags, four anchors is better. But unfortunately, back in 2011, this technology was nowhere near as accessible as it is now. There weren't even really that many companies making these things. And when I found one that was, they didn't have any prices on their website, so I had to email them. It was that kind of a thing. And they quoted me $10,000 US dollars 
for a development kit that had four tags in it. So that project was obviously never going to happen and that's why I was saying that the $25 price we saw was actually very good. But anyway, here's an example of somebody actually doing that outdoors. So this uh, quadcopter is hovering in place there, not using any GPS. So that's why these UWB systems are often used as indoor positioning because um, GPS not working inside, but this stuff does work perfectly well inside and also through walls fairly well. So I'll put links to these videos in the description. This one's filmed in portrait as well. What's wrong with these people? But anyway, he's how many tags does he have? I forget. Well, he's got a few tags. I think four four is ideal, but three you might be able to get away with it possibly if you know that the the three tags are flat and level. But anyway. The reason I got interested in this again last year, um, it was about six months ago that I got these, that I got this stuff and designed the circuit that we just saw at the beginning, um, was because I thought I might try this with uh, ArduPilot as a companion computer. So you could do basically what he's doing there, but instead of just having it hovering, you could have it function as sort of like a, a vertiport. I hear there's one in South Africa, a vertiport. Um, but basically the drone could be given a rough GPS location to go to and when it gets to within say 100 meters or so of the location then it would use these UWB things to, to know exactly where to land and because they're accurate to a thin sort of 10-20 centimeters resolution it would be able to land nice and accurately and not necessarily in the same exact spot every time so if your vertiport had say five different hangars or bays for the drone to land on um, because these UWB things can also send information, messages, other than just the ranging information, it could be used to communicate, come in and land in Hangar 2, and Hangar 2 would have its location known as well. Um, anyway, that's not going to happen because, like I say, these things here that I'm using, I'm not getting any more than 8 meters, so I gave up on that. But anyway, let's just have a look at what I was doing. So this is about 6 months ago when I got interested in SMD soldering and I bought some stuff to do that and I also got quite interested in uh, designing circuit boards using Easy EDA and having them manufactured by JLPCB. So this is my first foray into making a standalone Arduino basically so I'm not using a pre-made Arduino Pro Mini and soldering onto that. I'm designing my own circuit board which has the ATmega328P on it like that. Actually, this wasn't the first time I did this. Um, I did this once before for the uh, balloon board, but I'll make another video about that sometime. But anyway, so this is the circuit that you need, and I figured this out by looking at a few examples on the ED, Easy EDA library. You can see what other people have made if they've shared them, and also by reading around on the forums to see what is the minimum set of components that you need to make a functioning Arduino. So you need things like a crystal there, and if you want to have a, a, a reset that's resettable by the FTDI connector, you'll need something like this capacitor here that goes through to the reset with a pull-up to the um, VCC voltage. And there's not that much to it, actually. That's basically the whole circuit there. Oh, what's this? Oh, and some LEDs, optional LEDs that you can use. Um, so this was actually quite easy because, as it happens, there was one of these DWM1000 components or modules as they call them in Easy EDA. So all I had to do was select that and slap it in there and then draw which connections I wanted to go to where. And there is also of course an AT Mega 328 ready to go. And when it came time to lay out the circuit board I found that there was also a component ready to go, this one here. So this was already made exactly for this uh, for this module there. So somebody's obviously been playing with that, playing around with these already. Uh, let me just put that back. Uh, ooh, what happened there? Okay. Yeah, so that was actually fairly easy to, to get up and running. And it looks like, well, we saw it at the beginning, but I like looking at these 3D views. What a, this easy EDA thing is so awesome. I've done a lot more work with this too, which we'll see in some upcoming videos pretty soon. Uh, and I've also tried the JLC SMT assembly service, um, so I haven't received any of those yet, but um, it's all working out as quite well as far as I can tell so far. So I'll share that project on Easy EDA if anybody wants to get that and make their own. 
And that's about as far as I've got with this stuff so far. Once I saw the range, uh, I didn't really feel too enthused to follow it much further. But I'll just show you the Arduino library that I was using as well, because it was very simple. Um, this one here, Arduino DW1000, and it says it's not actively maintained, so I don't think anything's been happening recently. Oh, seven months. Well, maybe something, I don't know. Um, but it's reasonably well documented. And there's also a wiki which we'll have a look at in, the, in a minute. But the code that I was using is basically just in the examples. And then if you look at DW ranging anchor, DW 1000 ranging tag, I just used those two sketches almost completely verbatim. Like I didn't change anything. Um, but I did actually change one line or added one line. If we look at the wiki, we'll see um, over here there is something called LED blink feature. And if we look at that page, it says that if you add this line here in the setup call, uh, the setup part of your Arduino sketch like that, it will do these things. Um, or actually, you need to add three lines, sorry. So it'll be this, but you'll have MSGP0, and then you'll have P1 and P2, or P3. Uh, forget which ones I use. Well, it's right here, isn't it? Hang on a second. <laughs> So I've got TX, RX, and RX OK. Uh, so I must have used RX OK, RX, and TX like that. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> but anyway, what this does is it makes these LEDs uh, flash off and on just so that you can see that this module is actually doing something so whenever it receives a message it'll flash this light whenever it transmits a message it will flash that one and I'll, I'll show you a little demo of that just now so you can see what I mean well I was just going to quickly confirm that and I ended up wasting a half an hour because the documentation doesn't point out that you need a couple of extra lines so here are the three lines that I've added to uh, MSGP02 and 3 for those three LEDs but you also need to enable LED blinking and enable debounce clock. And to be fair, if we go back to that page that I was just looking at here, um, if we scroll down, there is an example which includes those two lines, but it doesn't really point out that you need those as part of the LED blinking. But let's just have a look at what that does. So I have the, uh, the tag on the left and the anchor on the right. They're not connected at the moment, obviously, because that one's not powered up. The tag seems to flash the left two LEDs while nothing's happening, and the anchor will flash just the middle one, which is RX. Uh, this RX doesn't mean it's received something, because that's what RX OK means. So RX means that it's tried to receive something, perhaps. I, I don't know. Don't ask me. But anyway, when we, <laughs> when we power them up, uh, we'll see that after a moment when they connect we get a whole bunch of blinky lights which is quite pretty to look at but not really sure how useful it is it does at least tell you that they're connecting and something's happening but I'm not sure how useful it is to look at each individual one and see all oh, right now it's doing RX I don't know uh, and if we have a look at the uh, where's my what's name terminal serial monitor here we go uh, so it's telling me, oh that's interesting, it says about 5 centimeters here. Usually it says about 20 centimeters is the lowest number I've ever seen. I wonder if it can detect this. Yeah, this is more like it. So usually it says something like 20 to 30 centimeters even when they're right next to each other. What? Oh, it does go down though, eh? Okay, so now they're about 5 centimeters apart and it says 5 to 10. Ah. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's going to do it for this video. I know it wasn't very useful. Um, and I'm going to have to figure out what that other guy was doing differently to me um, if I'm going to pursue this any further. So I don't know if I'll do much more with these. We'll see. But for right now, they're not proving to be very useful for the original purpose that I thought I might try using them for. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.